chapter 25. I'm just going to read a few verses. We'll pick up the thought in the introduction of what's going on. Verse 31, the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on, the, on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Look at verse 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy, your grace. We thank you for truth. Lord, we thank you for the righteousness and holiness of Almighty God. Now, Father, as we come to you in prayer this morning, our hearts go out to those that are sick. I pray for Brother Doug, you touch him. I pray for Brother Phil, you touch him. I pray for the Myers, you touch them. I pray for Brother Tony, you touch him. I pray for, Lord, the Hensleys, you touch them. I Pray for Brother Darrell's mother-in-law that you touch her and your will be done in that. Lord, I pray for others that are sick and others that are having to quarantine and others that, Lord, could not be here today and are providentially hindered that, God, you'd touch them, you'd bless them, you'd help them. Lord, those that, Lord, couldn't have service today because of ice storms and that, Lord, I pray you'd protect them and, Lord, you'd help them. Now, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd continue to range the atmosphere around here, and I pray that you'd speak to hearts. God, I pray that, Lord, you'd reaffirm the faith of those that have trusted in you. Lord, if there's any amongst us today who are unsaved, that, Lord, you'd show them their lost condition, and, Lord, I pray we'd see them birthed into the family of God. Lord, we stand in need of your help. Our country's in a mess. Churches are in a mess. Even Christians' lives are in a mess. Lord, we know the answer, and the answer and the key to it all is the Lord Jesus Christ. But Lord, just like when you walked among men, many rejected you. Today, many reject you as well. God, I pray in your long suffering, God, you'd continue to deal with hearts that we'd see folks get right with God before it's everlasting too late. Now, Father, bless. Use this unworthy vessel and glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it. For it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice, first of all, the sovereign. Look with me again in verse number 31. The Bible says, And when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Make no mistakes, the Lord Jesus Christ is Lord of lords and King of kings. Make no mistake that nothing that is transpiring in this world, uh, under this world, uh, or in the glory world is catching him by surprise. Uh, nothing has ever occurred to him. He is a sovereign, uh, all-knowing uh, 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 God. Uh, and can I say today, uh, uh, nothing has uh, uh, affected one uh, jot or one tittle from the Word of God. Uh, everything is coming to pass just as God said it would. Uh, and there's coming a day, friend, very soon... Uh, when he's going to leave his throne and come back to this world and the whole world will see him in his glory. We see here in verse 31 that he comes to set up his throne from the, kingdom, from the throne of David in the kingdom of Israel. He'll set up his millennial reign. It's very important to understand these things. He's coming back. 
Notice, if you will, not only the sovereign, notice the subjects in these verses. Uh, look in verse 32. Uh, said, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate one from another, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall sh uh, set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. Uh, can I say this is one of the five judgments in the Scriptures? Can I say this judgment is the judgment of the nations? And he is going to judge every nation in accordance to how they've dealt with Israel. Make no mistake, uh, God promised Abraham. He said he'd bless them that blessed him and curse them that cursed him. Uh, you better uh, be careful what you say about the nation of Israel. God's taking a uh, 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 notes. Uh, he's uh, keeping a record. Uh, and my dear friends, how America's dealt with Israel is very important. And God's going to separate the nations based on how they dealt with his people. Then notice the sentencing. Look in verse 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Notice he didn't say, uh, Come uh, uh, and inherit the heaven. Notice he doesn't say, Come and inherit New Jerusalem. He's talking about his kingdom. He's talking about the millennial reign on the, on the earth. Notice he says to them on his right hand, they're blessed. But notice the other crowd, verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. We see the sovereign one. We see the subjects and the sentencing. There will not be a hallelujah day for that crowd in verse 41. I'm interested in verse 41 and in verse 46 we find something that touched my mind, touched my heart. And I'm going to preach with God's help for just a few minutes on this thought. I want to preach on three eternal things. Three eternal things. You know, it amazes me that here in this world, people are always looking for the fountain of youth. People want to live forever. I've got news for you. You are going to live forever. Hmm? Just not in the current state that you're in right now. Hmm? Everybody is eternal. You're an eternal being. And in these verses, we find three eternal things that I want to address this morning. Can I say, I want you to notice, first of all, that there is an everlasting and eternal fire. Look at verse 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Now, I'm not the brightest light bulb in a bunch, but everlasting means that it's everlasting. That it never goes away. Notice some things about this eternal fire. It's a fire that is unquenchable. You cannot put it out. Matter of fact, in Mark chapter 9, verse 44, the Bible says, Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Uh, 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 friend, uh, make no mistake, uh, there is coming a day where folks will go to an everlasting fire, a fire that will never be quenched. Uh, 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 friend, uh, 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 in the very ch charred region of the dam, uh, those that are chained there uh, uh, are reserved unto everlasting fire. Uh, 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 the very thought that that fire could be quenched and put out uh, would spark a revival. Uh, uh, my dear friends, you and I hear about it. It rolls off us like water on a duck's back. Uh, but make no mistake, there is an everlasting fire that will not be quenched. Uh, that folks, the souls of Men will go there and be there forevermore. Uh, it's an unquenchable fire. Can I say it's an unavoidable fire for the damned? In Revelation chapter number 20, verse 14 says, And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Can I say this fire is not only unquenchable, it's unavoidable for the damned. Those who have not put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ will go to this place called the lake of fire. Can I say right now, 
the place in the uh, men or most parts of the earth is called hell. Hell's going to be cast into the lake of fire. Those that are tormented in hell today got something worse waiting on them. They're going to a lake of fire. It's unquenchable and it's unavoidable for the damned. My dear friends, there'll be no more second chance after you die. It's what you do with Jesus Christ right now that determines where you'll spend eternity. And can I say, when Matthew 25 takes place, when Jesus steps up on the beam of seat, it's too late for the nations then. Judgment comes. And friend, after you take your last breath, you're headed to judgment. And what you do with Jesus Christ now determines if you'll spend eternity in this lake of fire. It's not only unquenchable and unavoidable, it's undetectable. Hmm? Look with me in verse number 30. The Bible says, And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Can I say, this lake of fire is also referred to as outer darkness. Why is it outer darkness? Well, first of all, Jesus is the light. And they'll be eternally separated from Him. Jesus will light the city of New Jerusalem in His glory. There'll be no glory in the lake of fire. Uh, there'll be no lamb in the lake of fire. There'll be no Lord Jesus in the lake of fire. Uh, and it's a place of outer darkness. But it's also a lake of fire. You say, preacher, how can fire be dark? Well, we're accustomed to seeing that orange flame come off them logs we throw on the fire, on the fireplace. If you turn on your gas stove, you'll see a blue flame. Uh, they tell me there's a green flame too. I've never seen a green flame from a gas stove. I've always seen a blue one. But can I say, they tell me the hottest flame ever recorded is black. It's undetectable. It is a non-light-giving, all-encompassing, painful fire that folks will have to deal with forever and ever. I'm talking about three eternal things today. There's an everlasting fire. Can I say, secondly, there's everlasting punishment. Look with me. Again, in verse number 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. How many of you believe the Word of God's true? I mean, uh, if you believe John 3, 16 is true, you've got to also believe that Matthew uh, 25, 46 is true. And the Bible said that these on His left hand go away into everlasting punishment. You say, why are they going to be punished, preacher? Well, they're going to be punished for retribution. You see, because Jesus Christ left glory, entered into the womb of a virgin, was born into this world, took on flesh, uh, lived a sinless, perfect life, fulfilled the law of God, uh, then became the Lamb of God and went to the throne, uh, went to the cross of Calvary uh, and He laid down His life uh, and He shed His life's blood uh, and He gave His life for sin uh, and for sinners. Uh, and my dear friends was buried and rose again proving He was God. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, listen, because uh, He paid for your sin, uh, if you reject Him and you reject His payment for sin, uh, you'll pay for your own sins forevermore in a place called hell the lake of fire the bible says in mark 4 22 for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested neither was anything kept secret but that it should come abroad if any man have ears to hear let him hear and he said unto them take heed what you hear with what measure you meet it shall be measured to you and unto you that here shall more be given. You see, my dear friends, those that die and go to the lake of fire, they'll be sentenced at the great white throne judgment, and they'll be cast into the lake of fire to pay for their own sins. Whatever you've been guilty of in this life, you'll pay for 
in that place called the lake of fire. It's a place of retribution. Now listen, God's a just God. People that were really wicked, men like Adolf Hitler, he'll suffer more than that good moral neighbor you got. But make no mistake, everyone will suffer and everyone will be punished forever in the lake of fire. You say, if God is so merciful, if God is so much grace, if God loves people, why would God ever send somebody to a lake of fire? I've got news for you. God doesn't send anybody to the lake of fire. Uh, your sin from the moment you was born uh, was pulling you to the lake of fire. Uh, uh, you were damned and condemned already, uh, but Jesus came that you might have life, uh, that you might have life more abundantly. Uh, he came to break the bondage of sin. Uh, he paid for your sin debt and he makes a way for you to be saved. Uh, he makes a way of escape for the lake of fire. God doesn't put anybody in the hell, but God made a way where everybody can escape hell. Mm. Mm, can I say? It's a place of punishment. Folks will be punished because of retribution. Folks will be punished because of rejection. Mm, you rejected him. Therefore, you'll made yourself the Lord of your own life, you'll pay for your sins. John 3, 36 says, He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. He that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Hebrews three nineteen says, So we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. There's only one sin that sends people to hell. It's the sin of unbelief. Because you will not believe on the Lord Jesus Christ you will not be saved from your sin. Because you reject the Lord, you'll be punished for your sin for all of eternity. Listen. The oceans are salt water. And ask Brother Jim, Brother Charlie, they're experts. They spend a lot of time in the ocean, on the ocean. That salt water, it's, the, the water's just absolutely full of salt but one grain of salt in all the oceans of the earth is nothing compared you start measuring all the salt in all the ocean or all the sand on the seashore one grain of that salt is your lifetime compared to eternity eternity never ends if you're blessed to live 120 years, which I don't know why you'd want to live 120 years, but if you lived 120 years and looked like Brother Ray, that's a drop in the bucket. That's a drop of water in the oceans compared to eternity. And you'll spend eternity tormented in the lake of fire, being punished for your sin because you refuse to let Jesus pay for your sins. You refuse to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And they're punished for the retribution, for rejection, but this punishment is relentless. Verse 41, the Bible says, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire. Now listen right here. Prepared for the devil and his angels. The Bible makes it clear we were created below the angels. The angels are supernatural beings. And this place was designed for those fallen angels and the devil himself to inflict punishment on them forever. If it was designed to inflict punishment on supernatural beings, how much worse for the soul of man? In Luke 16, the Bible says in verse 23, And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. There's no party going on in hell. It says, And he seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried, and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of finger in water, and cool my tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. One drop of water is worth more in hell than all the gold in the world. say it is a place that the punishment is relentless it never lets up I already read the verse where it says there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth have you ever seen a dog 
that was hurt and it would gnaw at its limb trying to ease the pain. That's what people are doing in hell. They're gnawing at themselves trying to ease the pain, but comfort never comes. Can I say every time they gasp in air, all they breathe in is fire. Can I say the very scent of hell is brimstone. Brimstone is rotten eggs and sulfur intensified over and over and over. The very scent of it makes you want to regurgitate, Brother Tommy. But in hell you can't regurgitate because of the comfort you would get from the fluid. So you have the dry heaves all of eternity. No comfort. You want to gall your eyes out because of the pain. You want to constantly inflict pain on yourself to ease the pain. But no comfort ever comes. The punishment is relentless. And the lake of fire is everlasting. No way out. No escape hatch. No hope of a annihilation. No hope of being reincarnated into something else and given a second chance. Friend, for all of eternity, with all of the most wicked people that's ever lived and the imps and sorry no good devil himself, you'll be inflicted with punishment and pain and everlasting fire. We see there's everlasting fire. There's everlasting punishment. But I've got some good news. Read with me again in verse number 46. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Then the most wonderful conjunction in the Bible. But the righteous into life eternal. I've got good news. There's everlasting life. You don't have to die and go to hell. You don't have to go to the lake of fire. You don't have to be punished forevermore because Jesus already took your payment of punishment. Uh, he already took your sin upon Himself. Uh, he's already paid for your, uh, your sorry sins, my friends. Uh, there's everlasting life of redemption. And today, if you give the Lord your life, He'll save your soul. But what a blessing when He comes. Uh, 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 my dear friends, He's going to redeem our bodies. and We'll be given, given a body fashioned like the Son of God. Uh, uh, oh, he'll redeem our bodies. Uh, hey, we'll never die anymore. Uh, we'll never have sickness anymore. Aren't you glad no COVID in heaven? Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, no cancer in heaven. Uh, what a blessing. Uh, hey, you'll never get sick. You'll never die. Uh, hey, it's rejoicing evermore. Never get arthritis. Never get to... Uh, tired. Uh, you have a body like God's Son Himself. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Everlasting life and everlasting redemption. Hallelujah. Huh? Yeah. The Bible says now that His mercies are new every day. Yeah. We get to glory. It's only going to be one eternal day. Yeah. You're never ever yeah. going to need the mercies of God anymore because you'll abide in the redemption of God. Everlasting redemption. I thought about everlasting life, not only of redemption, but of reconciliation. You see, the Bible makes it clear that in the beginning when God made man, He met with man in the cool of the day, and they fellowshiped. But when man chose to sin, and sin passed upon all men, fellowship with God was broken. You see, Adam could see the spiritual world just like the physical world. We can't see God. Because we've been tainted by sin. But there's coming a day. Hallelujah. When we'll be reconciled with God Himself. When we'll walk with God Himself. When we'll fellowship with God Himself. When we'll be with Him forevermore. What a blessing, huh? Mm. Those things sin had broken, my dear friends, are going to be restored. What a blessing. Do you know the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, even this earth groans for the coming of the Lord to do away with the curse. Hmm. Oh, hallelujah. No wonder when John got a glimpse of it, he said, Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Hmm. We'll have everlasting redemption. Have everlasting life of reconciliation. Will I have an everlasting life of rewards? Uh, well, let, let me just make this clear. There's nobody in this building worthy of the powder it takes to blow away. If we all got what we deserve, we'd be in hell right now. But I'm not going to hell because I've been to Calvary. 
And I don't understand this. I don't understand it, Brother Rhonda. I just don't understand it that God would save me, but then he's going to reward me. I don't understand that. Uh, he saved me. Uh, he paid my sin debt. Uh, he's the one that sealed me. Uh, he's the one that secures me. Uh, he's the one that's gave me the strength to overcome. Uh, he's done it all. Uh, but when we get there, he's going to reward us because we put faith in him. Why? Well, I don't understand that. Uh, uh, but they're going to be everlasting rewards. You know the greatest reward is seeing those you've helped win along the way. When you get there, that's, that's going to be what was worth it all. See, lives that were changed because you put your faith in Jesus and didn't have enough sense not to tell somebody else about him. Huh? I thought about this. There'll be an everlasting life of reunion. We'll get to see them loved ones that have gone on before us. Them friends that have gone on before us, those we've worshipped with that have gone on before us, uh, well, heaven's going to be one eternal reunion. What a blessing, huh? Do you imagine the very characters of the Bible you're going to get to meet? Think about that. Uh, sitting by the Crystal River talking to the Apostle Paul. Uh, I'm going and talking to Abraham and Moses and Joshua and all of them. Go, well, that blows my mind. Those that we've read about, those that have been heroes of ours, those that we aspire to be like, we're going to get to meet them. Hmm? Uh, now listen. Some of you might wait hours to get some sports figure, some popular figure to sign something for you. There, you're not going to have to wait at all, and you'll get to spend all eternity with them if you want. Uh and you know what? They're going to be just as amazed with you as you are with them. Hmm? What a day it's going to be. I thought about this. It's going to be an everlasting life of rejoicing. Hmm? Can you imagine? This city went absolutely crazy last night because the Bengals, hallelujah, the Bengals finally won a game. Hmm? Yeah. Amazing thing. Can you imagine what it's like when we get to see our champion, the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, and all of heaven is heralding him, saying, Worthy is the Lamb to receive riches and power and glory and honor, and we'll be there shouting our lungs out. Can you imagine what that's going to be like? For all of eternity, rejoicing, happy, happy, happy. There'll be no more sin there, no more curse there, uh, no more negative anything there, uh, no more bad anything there. Uh, everything will be perfect. Uh, everything will be wonderful. Uh, and to beat it all, Jesus will be in the midst of it all. Uh, hey, we'll rejoice and rejoice and rejoice. Hallelujah! We'll rejoice forevermore Amen. for all of eternity. Who wouldn't want to go? Hmm. I mean, if the last two years hadn't given you an insight of this world's gone crazy, I mean, who wouldn't want to go to glory? I don't know when we're going. Uh, I sure do enjoy the blessings of God in my life now, but I'm glad I'm ready to go. And I promise you when we get there, there's nobody going to say, boy, I wish we was back in Kentucky. Uh, we're going to say glory, 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 and Andy Bashir will not be calling the shots. What a blessing. <laughs> That's enough to shout on right there. Yeah. Hmm. I hope he gets born again. Amen. He goes to church. He needs to get to Calvary. Right. But I'm interested in you today. Last thing I want to ever hear of is that you've sat under the preaching in this church. And you ended up in everlasting fire, suffering everlasting punishment. You know what the Bible says? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 6, Seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of unbelief. Again he limiteth a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your heart. In 2 Corinthians 6, 2, he says, For he saith, I have heard thee, and in time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. 
Behold, now is the day of salvation. You see, my dear friends, the Lord says, don't harden your heart. You don't know about tomorrow, but you got right now. Yeah. And today's the day of your salvation. Yeah. Don't reject him. Mm, there's a lot of people in hell today that had all good intentions of getting right with God. They just waited one day too late. Don't reject him. Give your heart to him today. You see, because the choice is really yours. Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you nay, but except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Today's your day. To repent means to turn from your ways to his way. To put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved from your sin. You can be made a new creature in Christ Jesus today. You can be given eternal life today by putting your faith and trust in Christ. Friend, there's three eternal things we looked at today. There's an eternal fire. I'm glad the only fire I ever feel is the fire in my heart that God's placed there. There's eternal punishment. I'm glad I don't have to pay for my sins. Jesus paid for them. And I was judged for sin at Calvary. And there's eternal life. And friend, there's nothing like having the peace of God in your soul, knowing that if this life ended today, you'll spend eternity with Christ. The real question is, do you have eternal life? Because nothing else matters. Don't matter your address. Don't matter how much money you got in the bank. Don't matter what you know, who you know, what you know. All, none of that matters. All that matters is if you've been to Calvary, if you've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. In a minute, we're going to have an invitation. We're going to invite you to come. Today's your day. Don't harden your heart. Come to Jesus. Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. If you come, we'll get somebody to take a Bible show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. But don't turn away the Lord. Put your faith in Him today. Give Him your heart and life. He'll save you. He said, if any come to Him, He no wise cast Him out. Will you come to Jesus today? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. As he comes, and they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we bless you. God, I'm thankful I have eternal life. I don't deserve eternal life, but I'm thankful for it. I'm glad you granted it to me when I put my faith and trust in you. Now, Lord, I fear in a crowd this size, there may be somebody here unsaved, don't know Christ. Lord, I pray today would be the day of their salvation. I pray today they wouldn't harden their heart. I pray today they'd come and give their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray the Holy Ghost conviction would fall upon this building, maybe those that are watching. I pray many would come to Christ. Now, Father, have your will and way. Speak to hearts. Bless this time of invitation. And God, certainly get glory to your name. We'll bless you for it, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.